What's going on YouTube? This is Necrosteel and we are finally back for some more Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire narrated Wi-Fi battles. Um, thank you for being patient with me and waiting for me to upload some more stuff. I just was really sick and just couldn't, I could barely even battle for a lot of the things I'm trying out for slash competitions that I'm in. But anyways though, today's match is, uh, we have two VG style, VGC style matches against Pruitt. And um, I knew he was testing out a Parish Trap team. So I ended up just kind of bringing random things instead of making an actual team. Otherwise, I would end up counter counter teaming him. But I wanted to try out Mega Pinsir for sure in doubles. Uh, Faint is a two-hit KO on a Moongus, which is amazing. Uh, I decided to go for Fake Out on Murkrow, figuring he tried a Parish song, or uh, I don't know. Just Murkrow has several annoying, non-attacking options to abuse Prankster with. So. I wanted to go ahead and go for that. I ended up switching out here as he brings in his Gengar after um, the eject button. Just because I wanted to go ahead and get Crawdite in here before he Mega Evolves and traps me in. Uh, also, this will allow me to get Whimsicott in here for Helping Hand slash knocking out Murkrow. Just because Moonblast is my only attack on Whimsicott. Now, he does surprise me when he goes for Fly, which is actually not a bad option, especially when using Parish Trap. That waste turns. And since he's using Fly, I would guess that he's also not Eviolite. So I can definitely knock him out. Unfortunately, uh, I end up missing that Crab Hammer. This is a banded Crawdon. And you can see kind of how closely uh, I I just picked my Mukumon kind of randomly because Crawdon wasn't even at level 50 for the battle. So I had just finished breeding this one, I believe. But that's okay. Crab Hammer, especially Helping Hand Boost, it does a ton of damage to Amoongus with the Choice Band. Uh, so. Uh, he definitely doesn't want to take those hits. Just with the adaptability boost, he's basically switching around here waiting for another miss. Uh, and I would go for knockoff, but I'm locked in a crab hammer. I miss another crab hammer, which is unfortunate because I'm pretty sure I would have put that Gothitelle in the cut into KO range had I hit it. But since he does get the Parasong off here, it's imperative that I take out the things that can trap me so that I can switch out if I need to. And seeing the damage from that crab hammer, I definitely would have KO'd with a helping hand boost. So that's unfortunate as Whimsicott is paralyzed, but I did take care of the Murkrow. So there's one fewer uh, Parasong users that he can actually use with the other probably being Gengar. He, he had a Politoed that he had on the team, but I don't see him actually using Parasong with Politoed in this circumstance. Uh, but anyways though, we are able to take out Gothitelle and Amoongus comes back in. This sucks because now um, Mega Gengar is going to come in so I won't be able to switch out Whimsicott. But, uh, you know, that's not too bad just because now I get to bring in something fresh just for Mega Gengar. And so Mega Gengar can't really do much against Pinsir besides Burn It. Uh, Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb won't be KOing me in one hit. And so I can just focus on taking out the Amoongus, who I figured would actually was going to go for Rage Powder. Um, I'm sorry, I predicted the Amoongus to go for Protect for the Rage Powder instead of the Rage Powder. So I just went straight for Faint. But he ends up going for a Rage Powder anyway. So now I'm able to take out Amoongus, which is nice. Uh, I can Encore Gengar into its substitute so that it can't do anything but sub while my Pinsir finishes it off. It's really risky to use Protect or Substitute or even setting up moves such as uh, Dragon Dance and such with uh, Pokemon that has priority Encore on the field. Just because they can just lock you into that so quickly and then as you see in this circumstance, there's just nothing you can do until it wears off because he's going to keep on going for substitute and I'm just going to keep on breaking them. Then when he finally has the Encore end after three turns, uh, it'll end at the end of his turns and then I can just finish him off with another Faint. Especially helping hand boost if he's not going to be able to live that. So I really like Faint as an option on Pinsir. It gives us some uh, utility against things with higher priority like Talonflame to hit them with the helping hand boosted Faint or at the very least finish them off if they have some prior damage which is easy on things like Talonflame just because they use moves with recoil I, I really like having that option available so I'm going to have a little more closely at using a Mega Pinsir on an actual team in the future now we do see there that Mega Gengar will be able to 2 hit KO with Shadow Ball but I'm not going to give him that opportunity and I'm just able to finish him off with yet another Helping Hand Boosted Faint now in Pruitt and uh, I second match I ended up still bringing uh, Hitmontop and Volcarona, and I'm sorry, Hitmontop and Whimsicott, but I ended up bringing Mega Altaria and Volcarona instead. Uh, bulky Volcarona is really fun to use because there are just so many Pokemon that just don't want to be burned, 
and so rage powdering them into contact moves that give them a chance to be burned is pretty fun, especially uh, Mega Kangaskhan does not like that. It doesn't normally carry any rock coverage, and so Rage Powder, he uses Fake Out twice in the Volcarona, just doesn't do that much damage because mine's a bulky build, and he has uh, two chances to get burned from that 30% chance, so that's always fun. At the start of this battle, I assess Kingdra to be the bigger immediate threat. Yes, Politoe could hide your voice, but Kingdra can Draco Meteor and also just use Water Boosted Stab Attacks, which I don't really want to deal with, so I just take out Kingdra immediately with Hyper Voice. Seeing how little damage that Hyper Voice did to uh, his Politoed definitely tells me that either it's Assault Vested, which is unlikely, or it's just a specially defensive build, which is more likely. Um, and he brings in Gengar and immediately Mega Evolves. With Volcarona in the back, I don't want to switch out until the rain is gone, uh, so I just stay in here and go for a Draco Meteor on Mega Gengar, hoping to kill it, and I just barely miss out on that KO. I just went for a low kick on Politoed to put a little bit more damage on it. And that is my only offensive option on the Hitmontop. And this is the same Hitmontop that I use in the um, Battle of Generations showdown. But he makes a good switch, brings in Gothitelle, and protects because I'm probably just going to go for low kick again. And that works out for him. I still can't switch out, so I just try going for Hyper Voice just to, to hit something. Uh, I figured even at minus two, I could take out the Mega Gengar from that point. And I know that he can't KO me with a Sludge Bomb. So. Uh, the way he's pivoting out and switching in this way, I'm never given the opportunity to switch out because, of course, Gathatel has Shadow Tag too. So the way he protected and pivoted out there was a really good option. With minus two, I'm just that that basically did a negligible amount of damage, even with the Pixelate boost from Altaria. Uh, I am happy though. I bred uh, this Altaria and a previous one that I used. Both are Megas from the same batch, and so I had named one Wing Guardian and the other one Leviosa just because they are brother and sister and because why not and this one doesn't actually have perfect IVs. i think i'm missing the defense IV. it's a 29 or a 28 but it's shiny so i went ahead and used it and i'm curious if you guys do that too if you are breeding and it's not for a competition do you keep pokemon just because they're shiny i've never used pokesab or anything like that so when i get a shiny pokemon it actually is pretty special to me but that that's i'm curious to see if you guys follow that same approach now since I have both of my Pokemon went down to the Parish Song, now I can bring in Wokorona and Whimsicott, which might seem like a not very uh, effective offensive duo, but with Wokorona being able to utilize Rage Power to keep, for example, Ice moves away from my Whimsicott, or even Poison moves because he's a bug type here resist those. That's actually a pretty good duo there. Now with Helping Hand, since Wokorona is so bulky, I'm going to be able to make those attacks from Wimsicott a little bit more effective. Now right there, he definitely predicted me to go for a Rage Powder, which is why he probably went for a Shadow Ball instead of Sludge Bomb and a Whimsicott. But I just didn't like that option. I didn't think that Rage Powder would be a good idea at that point, because even if he um, went for Shadow Ball or Sludge Bomb, uh, I could basically just Encore him into something if he protected with Gothitelle. And he actually ends up going for Thunder Wave. So I don't get paralyzed, and I'm able to encore him in the Thunder Wave, and that means that this match is definitely over, unless I get paralyzed four times over. Uh, so we still encore, and we get the attack off. So that's going to be the uh, end of that game. I hope you guys enjoyed that double header. I am hopefully in good enough health now to be back to recording pretty regularly. Uh, so look forward to some uploads. Have a good day, guys.